How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. Donahue here again this time. We're going to take a look at the mole and why chemists are so obsessed with the little furry animal. Well, our objectives will be to describe what a mole is in chemistry, and we will want to convert between grams, moles, and numbers of particles. So why are chemists so obsessed with this furry, cute little animal? Uh, they're not. Sorry to break it to you. They're not actually obsessed with these little creatures. We're talking about a different kind of mole. A uh, mole in chemistry is something all in of itself. So what is a mole? Well, a mole is a counting number number similar to a pair or a dozen. Uh, it's, it's atoms and molecules are too small to count individually, so we got to count them by moles. So uh, instead, we count them by moles of particles, similar to how we count eggs by the dozen. You know, you usually count eggs, how many, you know, one dozen eggs. You go to the store, you buy a dozen eggs. You know, say, I go to the store, and I'm going to buy 12 eggs. I'm talking, you know, like that's just how it's done. Same thing in chemistry, except this time we're, we use moles. So one mole of particles is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23 particles. So that could be anything. We could have a mole of oxygen atoms. We could have a mole of methane. All right? It doesn't matter. It's just saying you have a mole of particles at 6.022 times 10 to the 23. So since we're counting really, really tiny things, it makes sense that this is a really, really big number. That 10 to the 23 means that it is a big number. Right? Count really small things. That's why. So 6.022 times 10 to 23 is known as Avogadro's number. And sometimes it's abbreviated as a capital N. <coughs> N excuse me. So molar mass. Let's talk about that. Molar mass is the mass a sample has when there's a mole of it present. So scientists have kept this easy for you, and you can thank them, okay? One atomic mass unit, the, you know, atomic mass unit is a really small number of grams because you're talking about atoms and stuff. But when you have one mole of something that is one AMU, then you have one gram of that stuff. So basically, a mole of AMU is a gram. So the formula weight of a substance in AMU is numerically the same as the mass in grams of one mole of that substance. So what am I talking about? Well, O2 has a formula weight of 32.00 atomic mass units. So if I had one mole of O2, then I have 32.00 grams of it. That's how that works, right? If I had H2O, its formula weight is 18.02 atomic mass units. When I have a mole of water, I have 18.02 grams of it. You don't have to do any math or anything for that. You can think of the formula weight in AMU as equivalent to grams per mole. Okay, so O2 has a molar mass of 32.00 grams per mole. H2O will have a molar mass of 18.02 grams per mole. Okay, so it's a subtle and significant change. I'm hoping it doesn't trip you up. So what? Well, in a laboratory, we can measure masses of substances, but we're not actually going to count individual particles. Could you imagine? Be like, hey, go get me a mole of, you know, uh, sugar. And you got to count every single molecule of sugar up to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. That'd be obnoxious. All right. Instead, we use a balance. We figure out what its atomic mass unit is, its molar mass, and then we go, hey, all right, well, let, let me just mass out that much stuff into here. And once I have, you know, 180 grams of it, then I got a mole of sugar. And I know just based on its formula. So why do we care about how many particles there are? Couldn't we just use everything in grams then? Well, no. Re remember that when chemical reactions occur, they depend on how many particles are there and not directly the masses. So when we have this balanced chemical equation, you remember we had a balance and we're talking about individual particles, we got to get balanced, right? So that two is saying I need two individual H2 molecules or two moles of H2 for every one mole of O2 uh, to give me two H2O, right? So you need two molecules of H2 to react with one molecule of O2. You need to know how many particles there are and not directly the grams. So you need to know moles. So knowing the molar mass, we can convert the mass to moles, and even number of particles, and vice versa. And we're going to take a look at how we can do that. So converting between mass and moles. So let's start with that. If I was given the mass and I wanted how many moles, how do I do that? Well, mass is going to equal moles times its molar mass. Because remember, molar mass is going to be grams per mole. So if I want grams, well, then I take the moles that they'll tell me, and I times it by the molar mass, which is grams per mole, and the moles will cancel out, and I'm left with just grams, because that's how math works, okay? Um, yeah, so how many grams of water do you have if you have three moles of water? Well, let's do this example, all right? I know that the mass is going to equal three moles times 18.02 grams per mole, and moles are going to cancel out, and what unit am I left with? Grams, so now I just 
plug and chug into a calculator and I got 54.06 grams. So three moles of water is 54.06 grams. Well, how many moles of oxygen do I have if I have 48 grams of O2? Well, that's a little different. I'm asking for moles this time and they give me grams. Well, I know that if I rearrange this, I'm going to get moles equals the mass divided, or yeah, equals the mass divided by the molar mass. So let's do that. Well, 48 grams divided by 32.00 grams per mole, which is the molar mass of O2, and that's going to give me 1.500 moles. That's how I do that. It's not the most terrible thing, so why don't we do a little practice? Feel free to pause it here and try these problems. All right, well, welcome back. I hope you didn't struggle too much with them. Let's try some of these problems. So the first one, how many moles are in 35.0 grams of water? Like H2O, and I can look up, well, what is the molar mass? It's going to be 2 times 1.01 for the hydrogens plus the 16.00 for the oxygen, and I'm going to get 18.02 grams per mole. And hopefully this one starts to stick in your head because it's water. It's going to come up all the time. So now I go, all right, well, how many moles? Well, I want moles, and they give me grams, so I'm going to have to do you know, 35.0 grams, and then I'm going to have this molar mass, and I'm going to divide it by the molar mass, 18.02 grams per mole, and I'm going to get, beep bop, beep bop, boop, 1.94 moles as my answer. Next question, how many grams are in 4.56 moles of Li2O? So first thing, figure out the molar mass of Li2O. So I got two Li's, and each of them has a molar mass of 6.94 grams per mole. So I'm going to have to do that, and I'm going to have to add it to the mass of one oxygen, which is 16.00. And then I get a molar mass of 29.88 grams per mole. Okay, so now what do I do? Well, now i got to get grams. I'm solving for grams. So I'm going to have to do a little math. I take 4.56 moles. And I know that, hey, my molar mass is this 29.88 grams per moles. And if I want moles to cancel out, then I'm definitely just going to multiply. 29.88 grams per mole. The moles cancel out, and I'm left with grams. And my answer is 136 grams. All right. All right, third example. How many moles are in 48.54 grams of CO2? So first thing, find the molar mass of CO2. I know that carbon's 12.01. I'm going to have to add that to two oxygens, so two times 16.00. And I'm going to get a molar mass of 44.01 grams per mole. All right? And they want to know moles, so let's start. I got 48.54 grams. And if I want grams to cancel out, check out another way to think about this. Well, I got 44.01 grams for every mole. If I want moles, i got to put moles up top. So one mole of it is that 44.01 grams. And then I'm going to multiply these. Grams are going to cancel out, and I'm left with moles. So it's really 48.54 divided by 44.01. And I get 1.103 moles. All right? The only unit that I'm left with is moles. There it is. All right, last example. How many grams are in 10.45 moles of NH3? So figure out the molar mass of NH3. I look up N, it's 14.01, and then I got three hydrogens, so I got to do three times 1.01, and I get a final mass of 17.04 grams per mole. So how many grams are in 10.045 moles? Well, let's figure it out, 10.045 moles. And I look at my formula mass, it's 17.04 grams per mole, so I'm going to just multiply so the moles cancel out, 17.04 grams per mole. The moles cancel out, and I'm left with grams, which is what I'm trying to solve. And I end up with 178.1 grams as my final answer. All right, not so bad, right? Well... What if we want to know how many particles there are? Instead of how many moles, I want to know particles. Well, then you're going to have to use Avogadro's number, which is at 6.022 times 10 to the 23 particles per mole. So how many atoms are in 1.25 moles of sodium? Well, let's figure it out. 
particles is going to have to equal Avogadro's number times moles, right? Because we have Avogadro's number, which is particles per mole times moles. The moles are going to cancel out, and I'm going to be left with particles. So I'm going to get that 6.022 times 10 to the 23 particles per mole times 1.25 moles. And I'm going to get 7.53 times 6 or 10 to the 23rd particles. That's all you got to do. All right, so big picture. If we want to go from grams to moles, we got to use the molar mass. If we want to go from moles to particles, I got to get and use Avogadro's number. So if I want to go from grams all the way to particles, I can't do that in one step. I got to do multiple steps. So grams to moles, use the molar mass. Same thing if you want to go moles to grams or particles to moles. Uh, yeah, so that's how you're going to do it. All right. So some more practice. Again, pause it, try these, then check. All right, welcome back. How many molecules are in 22 moles of oxygen? Well, to figure that out, I got to go, all right, well, 22.0 moles of oxygen, and I got to use Avogadro's number because they want molecules, which is a particle. So I'm going to have to times that by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles or molecules per mole. Moles cancel out. I'm left with particles. So now I just plug and chug that into a calculator, and I get 1.32 times 10 to 25th molecules. Not so terrible. All right, how many moles are in 3.4 times 10 to the 23 molecules of H2SO4? So again, I'm going to have to use Avogadro's number as well. So I'm going to start with this 3.4 times 10 to the 23 uh, molecules. And now I got to think, well, what am I trying to get? I'm trying to get moles. So I want to put moles up top and molecules on bottom, right? Now, what are the numbers that go with that? Well, one mole is at 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So I'm going to do that 3.4 times 10 to the 23rd divided by, six, essentially divided by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. I plug and chug that, and I get 0.56 moles, right? Because molecules cancel out, and the only unit I'm left with is mole. All right, one more. Uno mas. How many particles are there in 14.5 gram sample of H2O? So I'm going to start with that 14.5 grams. Well, how do I get the particles? I know I can't do that in just one step, so I'm going to have to get moles first. So I'm going to have to do moles over grams because I want grams to cancel out. If I'm going to multiply and I know that for water one mole is at 18.02 grams see I told you commit that one to memory you're going to see it all the time so grams are going to cancel out I'm going to be left with moles now I need to figure out well I need to cancel out moles and I need to get particles so I'm going to use Avogadro's number and I know that it's one mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles so now I can do this math 14.5 times 1 divided by 18.02 times by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd divided by 1. And I'm going to get 4.83. And then I, I think I forgot some numbers. No, not 83, 85, sorry. 4.85 times 10 to the 23rd particles. Right? So that's how you do that. So summarize. What is a mole? Why is it important? And how can you convert between grams, moles, and particles or molecules? Same thing. Uh, I hope you found this helpful. I hope you're able to summarize that stuff. And I'll see you in class. Bring questions. Okay, bye.